You can't get it loud enough, I'm sure. They tested the Miranda. What do you want this one? None of them can. Just part of the microphones. <laughs> testing, testing, testing. Oh, it looks like we're live. No, two, two, two different people tested that. Okay. Okay. Are we live? Yeah. All right. I'd like to welcome you to the Community Television Board of Directors regular meeting for September 27, 2012. Uh, I'd like to start with the roll call. James Fisher. Here. Tess Fitzgerald. Absent. Denise Gallant. Absent. Keith Gudger. Here. Joe Hall. Here. Karen Machado. Present. Jennifer Pittman. Here. Matilda Rand. Absent. absent. Dory Steinman. Here. Adam Wade. Absent. I'd like to ask for any oral communications from the public. And I would like to remind the public that the oral communications are for items not appearing on the agenda. Hello, uh, Ron Holman here, longtime member of the public, volunteer, and in full disclosure, staff member as well. Um, as many of you know, I have been watching community television for a very long time, over 18 years now. And I just want to comment that I think that we're changing direction again. Um, I'm having a few issues with uh, letting go of some of my idealism vis-a-vis -vis public membership participation. Uh, at the same time, I recognize uh, we need to change in order to survive. Uh, so anyway, I'm, I'm optimistic. I think we've got a, a really good board right now. And that really makes a big difference in how this organization functions, because I've watched a lot of dysfunction at the board <laughs> level as well. And, and uh, I'm, I'm happy with what we're doing now. So I just want to thank all the volunteers on the board as well. And sorry, some of you weren't able to make it to the picnic, because that's where we really wanted to say thank you. So I'm saying it again now. Thank you. Thank you, Ron. Are there any other members of the public that would like to speak? Okay, um, I'd like to address the agenda. Uh, first up, we have the consent agenda. Are there any requests to pull anything from the consent agenda? No request. I had a question about the regular agenda versus uh, reports and correspondence. We have item eight which is the review of regionalization. And I'm wondering whether it might make more sense for us to hear Lynn's report, item 11, before we have that discussion, um, just because he has a lot to say about that. Would anybody have that. a problem with us? No. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I just want to that. make sure that's okay. And yeah. no members of the public have a, an issue sure. with that. Okay. Yeah. And um, it was just pointed out to me that we have two item 12s, but um, I don't think that, that that's a problem. Especially because we're adjournment. <laughs> okay, um, the Finance Committee met. Um, is there any discussion among the board about the consent agenda? Seeing none. No. Any, any discussion from the public about the consent agenda? Um, so the auditor was at the Finance Committee and uh, another really good audit and that's been the case over all these years so I want to really uh, give thanks to those who have helped in the administrative the accounting and all of that stuff because some nonprofits fall down in that area as you well know and that's been to me a major success that we have stayed in the black and we have a solid uh, financial footing that will be very important as we move into the future so just want to say thanks to all that staff that keeps that running well. Okay, so it's back to the board. Uh, is there a motion about the consent agenda? Um, would you like a motion to approve the consent agenda yes, as stated? Yes, please. <laughs> I'd like to make a motion that we approve the consent agenda as stated. I'll second it. Okay, we have a motion and it's been approved. Going to have uh, all eyes, all, all people voting for. <laughs> All those opposed? Okay, the motion passes. Okay. 
And then the next item is regular agenda item six, certification of special CTV election. Okay, and let's see, James, you and Lynn were the uh, election. That's correct. James, I don't know if you want me to report on this. I'll be glad to. You have before you the election certification numbers. Um, we uh, met on September 7th after receiving the final ones just prior to 5 o'clock. Um, the votes received were 187. Of the 187, the yes votes were 179 with eight no votes. At the time of the certification, there were 286 members. The votes represent the following. Yes votes, 66.79%. No votes, 2.98%. And the members not voting was 30.22%, with the yes vote exceeding the required 51%. Okay. And we signed the certification, uh, and it's available for anybody to look at it. Okay. So I think we, uh, we need a motion on this, unless there's any discussion from the public. Back to the board. <clears throat> want to mention that I think the people who were involved in this, the members who took the time to vote, thank them. Uh, Keith, all the other board members here who did the calling to kind of remind members. Kathy D'Angelo who ran the election two times. Uh, it was an interesting experience. I did calling and uh, got a lot of answering machines. But I did talk to a number of people and it was interesting. I, I was, you know, I you know, I don't have a context to put it in, but I got a lot of positive feedback from people that I, you know, I thought I knew people on the list and they were never home, but the ones I didn't know were. And uh, I got a fair number of, of positive comments, people who've come and have been interns here. I don't want to go on and on, but it was an interesting experience. And three or four of them swore they would vote, and I called them back by mistake, and two of them said they already put it in the envelope. So <laughs> <laughs> anyhow, I just thought it was a, a good effort at communicating and communicating the importance of it and why it's being done and uh, for all involved uh, I think a lot of work was done and uh, for myself I just wanted to say I understand it and appreciate it yes uh, I know Matilda isn't here tonight but she did a lot of work helping to organize and then making lots of phone calls and I really wanted to thank her for all her efforts Absolutely. and I also wanted to mention that uh, I don't think it could have passed without the work done prior to this in the previous election. I think the meetings that were held for the previous election and all the work that Marianne and Karen did and in working on the previous election shouldn't be forgotten that that was a very Absolutely. important part of getting this election to, to work. Well, I just, I, Keith, I just wanted to say I'm so proud of you and Matilda and Kathy and Lynn for spearheading this and really taking charge and really making sure that we reached out to the members and making the phone calls and doing the work and pounding the pavement and doing what needed to be done. I mean, just the fact that this passed is just really incredible. And I'm so proud of the work that everybody did on this board and the volunteers and the staff. It just really, we all came together to get it done. And I, you know, I can't take a lot of credit for this second round. Um, thank you for thanking me for the first round, but I really, I can't take credit for the second round. It was really a lot of hard work on everybody's part. And I'm, I'm so proud of everyone. And this was just a huge achievement for our organization. I'm really happy that it passed. Okay. So is there any other discussion here at the board? Okay. I don't think so. Can we have a motion to certify the election? I'd like to make a motion to certify the election. Do we have a second? I'll second that. <laughs> All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Okay, the next item, number seven, is the discussion of the Governance Committee's recommended revisions to the CTV bylaws. Mm -hmm. uh, this is quite a long document. It's in the board packet. Uh, before we open it to the public, is there any discussion on the board about all the uh, items? No, I, you know, I, I did get a chance to read it over, and I, I think that we are making some really positive changes and some needed changes, and I think that they have been thought out and um, really discussed in, in good detail, and I, I, I approve of what the changes are, personally. I think you guys did a good job. I'd like to point out that I passed out tonight to the members of the public and of the board 
a letter from Matilda Rand, who couldn't be here tonight, a board member, with her suggestions for how we establish a policy mechanism or protocol to make sure that members do have input into upcoming board appointments. Uh, and I would hope that the board members will get a chance to review that letter as well. Can you read it? I'd like me to read it? Okay. Matilda proposed that community television establish a policy mechanism or protocol to give members input into upcoming appointments to the board. She sees two options right now. One would be to send members a notice before a board meeting where appointments will be made, state that at the following meeting the board will appoint a specific member of at-large members of the board, specific number, excuse me, and that the board is interested in names for possible candidates. If there's a need for new board members with specific skills, such as financial, fundraising, marketing, administrative, or technical, state that also. CTV members could suggest appointees from within the CTV membership or from people within Santa Cruz County whom they know have specific skills needed on the board. People currently not members of community television will, of course, need to become members after they've been appointed. The other option was to allow CTV members to circulate a petition to advocate for a specific persons for a board member with a specific skill that they feel would strengthen the board. Both options can run concurrent with the understanding that it is ultimately the responsibility of the board to appoint new members to the board. I, I have comments, but I'll wait till the public comments and then okay. talk about it. I just need to round up, make sure there were no comments from the board first, and then I'll open it to the public. So, anything from the board? Okay, all right, any public comments? Well, this is where I'm going to disagree in the direction community television is, is heading in, in some respects. Um, I've, I've shared with you my disappointment in myself for not paying closer attention to what this election was. It was the election to end all elections, and I didn't realize that. I thought we were voting to simplify the manner in which members had uh, to vote on major changes to the bylaws. That was very unwieldy. That was really uh, keeping us down. Um, there was broad agreement that that needed to change. That's what I thought we were voting on, and I'm not the only one who thought that. I didn't read the legalese. I didn't take the time, and that's my responsibility. I, I accept that. Uh, within the legalese, it basically eliminated membership. It eliminated uh, seats on the board that are elected by the members. Um, I don't think that that's a good way to go, but you know, what's done is done. The question now is how do you maintain the inclusiveness? How do you maintain the enthusiasm of uh, the membership? which is vital to this organization. And, and I understand we need to reach out and be really more inclusive of all the community, which our membership, uh, I will agree, is, is not. Um, but this is the big question to the board. My answer would be to codify that there are still seats that are elected by the membership. Because there still will be a membership. It'll be just administrative. Um, but that's the way I would do it, and, and you can do that. That's within your power. Uh, the governance committee meeting, nobody <laughs> really agreed with me. So, and I, I know how to count votes, so it's not, I'm not attached to this, but I need to say it because this is how, how I feel. I think Matilda's compromise is, is a good one. Um, I just think you, you need to codify some sort of mechanism that ensures that we uphold our value. You know, we have a whole list of values, and one of those is participatory democracy. And this getting rid of uh, members on the board who are elected, uh, I think, is a step away from that value. So I, I, I implore the board to try and find some compromise, some way of codifying it, because I trust the board right now to do the right thing and keep the membership involved, but I'm afraid as time goes on that the board may change, and, and boards sometimes can get a little isolated and, and you know, insulated from the membership. So that's my concern, and I hope that there's some way you can find to address that. Thank you. Oh, one other little, little housekeeping thing. Section 5.02, qualifications. Um, I really don't think you, you need that paragraph 
anymore because uh, being a good standing at CTV doesn't really have any relevance. I also uh, think that the uh, thing about a member of a board who is an employee is no longer really pertains either because there's no way to get elected. You have the control over who gets appointed. If there's an ex-employee who has an ax to grind, then you simply say, no, we're not going to appoint you. But I, I would not uh, think that this would uh, be a good thing because you can exclude people such as myself who may be retiring, who may be laid off. I think I'd be a great board member. But according to this, I couldn't for a full year. That doesn't make sense to me. I, I think you're limiting your choices, and I think if you understand now, you make the appointments to the board, you no longer need to worry about the reason behind this rule. Thank you. Any other comments from the public? Okay. I'd like to bring it back to the board uh, for uh, further discussion. Um, I was at the governance committee and we had quite an extensive discussion on what uh, Ron talked about <coughs> and I went back and forth through a number of options. One, expand the membership, don't expand the membership and I kind of came down in agreement with Matilda on number one uh, in terms of an option of informing people because I think we want the broadest outreach for uh, membership and that seemed to be the best way to do it in my opinion we can email the members and do it that way the petition one <clears throat> my concern there is if I don't have anything wrong with it but if you don't appoint them then you've created the problem where you've kind of uh, turned your back mm -hmm. so I think the proactive part of number one seemed to make sense to me and uh, perhaps as part of the motion to adopt the bylaws, we do establish that as a policy. But I wanted to get Lynn's comments when we're all done about his thoughts on, on how to perhaps approach what we talked about at the governance committee in terms of some method to be inclusive, but also to keep a pretty flexible method of doing it. Mm -hmm. And I accept the fact at this point it probably doesn't make sense to expand the board because we really don't know what organization will be in a year. But I thought that was... The more I thought about it, I thought that was a good approach. So those are my particular thoughts on, on the bylaw changes. Mm -hmm. Yes, Jennifer. I have a question about number um, Matilda's proposed number two. I'm not sure I understand that allowing CTV members to circulate a petition, and I'm not sure I understand why we would be granting or not granting that right. Isn't Wouldn't that be their right? To do whatever they want to do. To, to circulate <laughs> yeah. a petition anyway? I believe, I mean, I don't want to speak for Matilda, but from what she told me, that came from an organization she's familiar with had that procedure in place. That you could mm, have, have a petition. Yeah. So she wanted to mention that as one mm -hmm. option, but it sounds right to me that anyone, anyone could do could, such a thing. Right. right. I mean, it, it sounds right. like they, they could do, yeah. I mean, it sounds silly to say it because it seems like yeah. they, of course, should be able to do whatever they... Right. Maybe that should be a, a notice to ourselves to, to pay attention <laughs> to the petitions, maybe. It sort of happens under number one anyway. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I think, Jennifer, I, I agree with you. I don't think I would support putting that specifically as a rule. If they want to do a petition, they don't need our permission to do that. And I, I think I agree with Joe as well that I, I like the ideas and as laid out in number one better myself. But um, one of the things I wanted to mention is part of the problem we've had with membership elected seats is that our members simply don't vote in the numbers that we have wanted them to previously. We've wanted them to be more engaged and more active and more involved in, in our goings on here. And what we've found is that there just has not been, up until this most recent election, there just hasn't been the level of interest that we have needed and expected and wanted. And I think that's that was part of the, the drive that we took that away. And we are trying to build a stronger board, a more multi-talented board that can bring different things to the table. And I think it's not that we wanted to exclude anybody. It's just that there just wasn't the, the level of interest that we had wanted and needed. So that was, that was one of the reasons. It's not that we were trying to be exclusive. But um, just a thought on that. Okay. So there's quite a number of, of changes listed in the bylaws. Mm -hmm. um, as, as you know, the bylaws, now that we have certified the election, have changed and they, they have a weird sort of numbering scheme. It goes one through four and then it jumps to seven and then it jumps to nine. Right. Um, 
those changes and the proposed ones you have in your packet, the renumbering was made not as strike through. Uh, that was done before this packet was done as a strike through. Mm -hmm. um, Lynn, could I ask you to address us about uh, your opinion about the bylaws? Okay, well, the bylaws that you have now are the ones the Governance Committee has brought forward. They have not been vetted by our, our attorney, um, but we did put them on the agenda. It is our first reading. It's open to amendment. If the board chooses to make an amendment tonight, they can do that. Okay. Um, then we would send that to the attorney before our next meeting. We would then settle on um, we'd have the legal opinion, we would bring it back to the board for the final reading. Um, so it's imperative that there's going to be an amendment. It, it should be tonight. It doesn't say that you can't have one on the second reading, but it should be pretty final by the time you get to your second reading, once it's been vetted by the attorney. Mm -hmm. um, I think there was a lot of work done on this. I, I know there was a lot of work done on this. Um, and I, I don't... The way you have set up appointments does not exclude a, a member of CTV. I think it almost uh, reaches out to members of CTV to sit on this board and be an active and engaged member. Um, but, but if you want to, I think the point was to try and make sure they understand that, and that might be something you want to put as an amendment to the, these, the first reading, and then that will go to the attorney. Uh, that's, other than that, they, they look pretty clear to me. There was, uh, I think Ron pointed out a couple of areas that, that we need to change tonight, and um, I think it was on page. Two qualifications. Yeah, on page 47, yeah, the, um, a, a member in, uh, age and in good standing of CTV at the date of the election appointment. It's, it's really that that should just be st uh, stricken. It says age 18. Um, at the time of election and appointment. I don't think you need anything in there around good standing in CTV. And then, uh, up, again, it's up to the board what they want to do in terms of a uh, uh, employee, but I don't know that it's particularly relevant. Um, yeah. I've, I've never seen a bylaw like that before. Um, well, there was a very specific I'm sure there's some reason. history. And, uh, <laughs> there is some history behind that, and I, I personally would not support deleting that. Okay, and um, let, let me respond by saying that this, this board appoints. These aren't elected. These aren't petitioned. Um, right. And I think board accountability is fine, and you can do it either way. But... but um, um, I guess part of me goes, the, the board has to be accountable. And so, you know, I don't know that you, I don't have a bent one way or the other, but I want to value what Ron said by saying that, that, that you still will appoint. This board, there's no election. You're going right. to appoint members from this point forward. That's how these bylaws read. Right. You'll get, uh, and you'll, the other thing I, I guess I'd point out is that I have no problem with sending out to our members that we have two appointments. Uh, we just sent those out. You know, the, the city of Watsonville just sent out um, a request for appointment, and the city of, of Capitola just sent out for appointment. That's how the board would do with at large appointments. They would simply let people know uh, through our normal channels on our web page and also on the. Uh, you know, there, there are two, two points you raised there. One, um, in terms of the ex exclusiveness, at this point, because the board appoints, it's sometimes awkward to appoint somebody that has been a past employee, but I think that's up to the board to decide one way or the other. So I, I wouldn't mind dropping that. I know why it was done, and it was for you know problems, and those problems won't exist under this type of a system. Yeah. So I think uh, that would, it kind of solves itself, so sometimes having less is better. And in terms of how you uh, deal with the allowing members to know, I would rather adopt that as a policy as, a, as opposed to not being in the bylaws, because it really has nothing to do with governance. It has to do with administration and operation. And I think it's a good idea to let people know, because I don't think the world is overwhelmed by people who want to be on boards anymore, right. because right. you end up doing a lot of work. Right. So um, the, for those two reasons, I think, I prefer just to, and from my point of view, I'd be comfortable dropping the uh, uh, one-year restriction on somebody who was a former employee. I mean, we're only talking about six people or something. Right. And the second, I think a policy, and I'd be glad to make a motion when we're all done, uh, that as part of this, we also adopt a policy that we let the uh, members know if there's an appointment available and what the skills are, okay. and leave it out of the bylaws. Mm -hmm. 
I have a question about the codification of this. So if we were to put this in the bylaws, this, this num uh, number one, uh, would that mean that if something came up in a meeting, we couldn't make a decision until the next two months because we ha wouldn't have another board meeting for another two months? I mean, would it hamper us to codify it in any way? Because I actually like the idea of having it be a regular, I like it in the bylaws. I like it being clear that this is, we are connected and, and announcements are going out and this is our mode of operation um, no matter what. I just am not sure if there's any downside to making it part of the bylaws. Does anybody see any? Which, which item are you talking about? Number yes, one, uh, Matilda's. Oh, 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 sorry. <laughs> Putting this is like, this is how we're going to. I know, it, it just, to me, it seems uh, a little too detailed. And yeah. uh, I, I don't know. Maybe what we should do when we do it, because I think you raise a valid point, is we vote on what method we'd like, and then we vote on the overall. You know, there are a couple of things we might want to vote through on and get people's opinions. It isn't they're right or wrong, it's just how you want to approach it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you know, separate it up into a series of motions, and once we're ready to go. Okay. Uh, then I have another question about qualifications. Is it le it's legally re legally required that board members be 18? It'd be great to have somebody young in here. The same thing um, because oh. we've tried in the past to get someone from the university. I mean, they could be seven. Well, they would be. If, if, yeah, uh, to be on the board. If, if you get into a legal activity. And this is uh, something so the attorney would have to deal with. Okay. I think I think you, you end up with a problem if if there's a. Okay, I understand. Okay. Yeah, so I'd be in favor of nixing all that except for the 18 years, on the qualifications. I know that the, when I was looking at 502, I specifically left in good standing at CTV, mm -hmm. just but I did that for a reason because a member who had. Well, of course, see, that's the thing. It comes back to if the board's appointing it, I know the board will make that decision. Right. Yeah. So you're right. That, that could be struck. Yeah. I just wanted to discuss that and, and mention that to Ron. So I mean, that's Ron part of history, page. too. <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. Well. But, yeah. but I also think it goes back to still being close to staff members and keeping confidentiality within the board. That's, that's the other issue that I, that I have with, with striking that. It's my personal preference that we leave it in there. But Well, I think... Don't we have in here that you can't be an employee? I mean, that's the difference. We're not saying, uh, I don't think that's changing 5.02 opens it up so that employees can be on the board. No, it, no. it just opens it up so that past employees. Yeah, yeah no, I still have an issue with okay. that. Okay, I just wanted to, cl <laughs> I wanted to clarify that. That's why I think we should do a couple of series motions. Yeah, just... no, I'm still, I'm, I, I feel very strongly about that okay. particular issue. Well, perhaps somebody should make a motion and then uh, get it seconded and then have it open for further discussion uh, on the well, question. Yeah, I'd kind of like to do, a, do a series of, of motions. Yeah. Right. The question, I think, is should we first have a motion on Matilda's proposal, whether it should be a policy or in the bylaws? Was that the yeah. first thing? Yeah, and then, and then the other question that uh, Karen was talking about be another motion. And then 5.02's changes would be a Yeah, and then one. you overall adopt whatever is, is okay. the uh, complete one. And so uh, I, I'll uh, do, since I spoke first on it, I'll make a motion that we uh, not include uh, the proposal by uh, board member. Uh, Matilda ran into bylaws uh, in terms of soliciting uh, information and uh, announcing appointments to the board, but adopt it after we adopt the bylaws as a policy for us. And that be done as a procedural matter, not as a bylaw. So my motion basically is that uh, number one in Matilda Rand's be uh, adopted as a policy of the board for administrative use and not part of the bylaws. I second. I have a question. So, what does that mean? A policy? What, what, well, what the policy. Does that have? It, if you have a policy, your staff should follow the policy. Um, why don't you describe what you would think it means? Because here's the people <laughs> if, who deal with if it. If you direct the administrator to notify the membership that you have an appointment open, that's our job to do it. That's administrator. That's a procedure. You're saying that's the policy you're going to have. That's a procedure we would follow. Mm -hmm. um, so it would be become, become part of our handbook. And, yes. and when you have an opening, you'd notify us, and we would get it out to the membership saying there's an appointment available on such and such a date. Please contact us if you're interested or fill out the following form. But, but it would be our job to follow the policy of the board. 
but it's administrative. It's not in your bylaws. That's what I, I believe Joe was saying. Yeah. And so, what difference would it be to you in your if, to the, what difference would it be to the members to have it be a, pol a policy or codified in the bylaws? Like, would I they think what you're trying to get at is making sure the members are notified there is an appointment, and that can be either in the bylaws or mm -hmm. it can be a policy. And I. Joe was just saying administratively, we can handle that. That's how we would do it. We'd get the notification out through the normal channels that we do to let members know there's an appointment available. Um, and that, I think the only difference is that, that we're following the policy versus that it's stated in the, in the bylaws. Okay, so the members but, wouldn't get any different treatment? No, 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 it would, it would, it would no, it would be very yeah. transparent to the members okay. that they have the opportunity to be appointed to the board. One of the differences would be which tab it's under in our board. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. That's also something that once you direct us to do that, we'll uh, find a place to get in the handbook. Okay. Right. Yeah. That, that would be my next question. Yeah, there's currently six policies already in your handbook, mm -hmm. so we'd be yeah. needing policy seven. <clears throat> well, there, there's also the financial policies, which is a separate section. Well, there's board policies. There's so board policies yeah, there's and board there's policies financial policies. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So. All right. So is there... I think we have a motion. Well, we motion have a motion and it's been seconded. We've mm -hmm. had board discussion. Is there any discussion from the public? No. So I'd like okay. to bring it back to the board and ask for the vote. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Nay. Okay. Motion carries. Then we have the second issue that came up in terms of the qualifications. Mm -hmm. And um, it's funny, I, I find this... You know, there, there are pros and cons of having former members on the board and not on the board. Or board excuse me, thank you. Yeah. And I go back and forth, but I think, you know, and, and other groups I've been on, uh, once the board takes kind of the responsibility of appointing, a lot of these type of things don't really become. And, and I, I, I wouldn't. I would be fine with taking it out at this point and just <coughs> keeping it in the board's thing. But on the other hand, I understand what the other issues could be, and so I'm kind of curious what anybody else has to say. Any discussion from other board members? I just as soon eliminate this. I think uh, there could be somebody who could be very vital to the board that has been an employee the year before, and I think we're cutting somebody like that out. By doing this, and although we've had a problem in the past, well, we just wouldn't invite that person to join the board. Mm -hmm. So it's up to us, right? Mm -hmm. So we don't need to say it in this, these words. It, it, it's funny in a way. One of the speakers mentioned that we trust the board. Maybe the future boards wouldn't be trustable, but <laughs> <laughs> I'm willing to trust this group. Right. <laughs> yeah. I just I don't know. To me, it's contentious. No, I don't. And, and, and I have, I want to add, um, and, and Ron pointed out uh, fairly well on this, um, my feelings. Um, we have our elections at a certain time of the year anyway. I mean, it's not like it happens every time we meet. And the chances of this year uh, issue uh, coming into play is pretty minimal. So, I mean, for me, I'd be happy to take it out, especially if it uh, kept us from bringing somebody on the board that we may truly uh, feel as an asset. I have no problem taking it off. Okay. Well, what we're talking about is reducing 5.02 to the saying, all members of the board must be at least 18 years, years of, age. of age. I just want to make that clear. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, is there any further discussion? Can we have a <coughs> motion that there's no further discussion? Well, actually, we, we close the discussion and we ask for a motion. Okay, we'll close the discussion. And I have a motion. <coughs> Well, I'll, I'll move that we strike no person may be a member of the board who was an employee of the corporation on any day within the year prior to his or her election or appointment. And well, and also in good standing of CTV at the date of the election or appointment? What? This part too. Just period after. Oh, in good standing? Well, why not? Well, I didn't but, mention that. That's a bit of history, too, but on the other <laughs> hand, I don't think it matters one way yeah. or the other if yeah. you leave it entertained. Tori, I think what we were discussing I is just that, that, that 5.02 just stop after it must be 18 years of age, age. Yes. Period. period. And not include individual members. It doesn't move any closer. 
All members of the board must be at least 18 years of age, period. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. So Dory has made a motion, and there has not been a second. I'll second it. Okay. But did she, which, did you include the first, the first part of the sentence, or just the no, second? No, but you can add to the motion. Well, I okay. Uh, it comes back to Dory if she wants to modify her motion first. Mm -hmm. Did you want to add that? To <laughs> I would motion? like to. I would like it to read: All members of the board must be at least 18 years of age. Period. Stop. Okay. So, I accept two. that. I accept it. It's a second. Okay. Now, is there any discussion on the board at that? And any discussion from the public? Okay. So I bring it back to the board. Okay. I'd like to ask all those in favor. Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. The motion carries. And I believe we're back to discussing all the rest of the changes in the bylaws at this point. Now, um, I know there's a lot. I hope yeah. the board has had a chance to look at most of them. Uh, the governance committee uh, went over most of this, and mm -hmm. their recommendation had to deal with cleaning, just cleaning it up. Mm -hmm. uh, this is the first reading. We're going to hopefully we will approve these, but then we will expect that the attorney will look over them and potentially make suggested changes to make the cleaner. So I believe what we're going to do is we're going to say that we're going to approve the changes, but the contingent on the attorney's feedback, so they would not go into effect until the next board meeting. Uh, we'd have a second reading at the next board meeting with the attorney's input, and then that would be your final reading and agreement. Um, okay. Well, I'll go ahead and make a motion here. Uh, I move that we approve for first reading the recommendations of the Governance Committee for the CTV bylaw changes with the two amendments made at this meeting concerning uh, membership outreach for openings and the member qualifications. We have a motion. Do we have a second? I'll second that. OK, is there any other discussion on the motion here on the board? I see none. Any discussion from the public on the motion? So we're going to close the discussion and ask for all those in favor. Aye. 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 All those opposed? Motion passes. Okay, so that's item seven. Now at this point I've asked that we remove that we move the report of the executive director up before the discussion of regionalization. So if we could Lynn, would you please Yes, thank you. Uh, you have before you my report. Um, I would like to add a couple things to this report that I, I, I unfortunately neglected, and probably because we're right in the middle of it. Uh, but uh, we've been working on the elections. Uh, we have had a number of local electeds come in to uh, do a three-minute um, uh, talk on their uh, candidacy and what they want to bring to the table. We've had a pretty good showing. I think we've only had two that didn't two two that didn't make it. Um, 15, oh, 15 out of, uh, oh, yeah. and, and what was really good about this, they were not only on time, in most cases they were 15, 20 minutes early. Okay. So it gave us time to try to relax, and Ron did a really good job of working with the producers. Everybody really worked well with them, and people that even came that were nervous really came really well on the camera, so I, I want to talk about that. Uh, we're also working with Gail Pellerin's office to have her talk about the new web um, uh, registration That's great. Um, and uh, she's going to be doing that with us and then we're also talking about having uh, the two uh, um, poll workers that recently were um, awarded for their um, length of stay as poll workers with the county and then we're asking for two younger ones to talk about uh, why it's important to work in elections and secondly why it's important to vote. Um, and then you have the report before you. If there's any questions on the report, I'll be glad to talk about them. Um, I think we've covered just about everything in the report. It's been a, a the staff has been incredible. Um, you know, somebody new coming in who's totally naive to production and, and editing, and um, I, I, I've learned a lot, but I've learned to rely on them when it comes to that sort of thing. And, and you know, it's, it's a work in progress, but you've got a great staff. 
They're very committed. Uh, they're very committed to the community, and, and, and it shows. So I just want to say that the volunteers are incredible. Members are incredible. I'm, I'm glad to be here. So if, again, if you have any questions about the report, please. Uh, well, you have the whole section here under uh, the CMAP discussions, but I think you're going to cover that in another item. Yeah, we, that would be the next item we have a discussion about. And I, I just wanted to make sure you had a brief on it before we went through what, what is available. Okay. Oh, also, I did provide for the board Kathy's report, giving you the numbers, uh, both, uh, uh, and that's available to the board. Chance to look at that. Okay, well then let's move on to the discussion of uh, regionalization. Well, this is going to take a little bit more time, I think. Um, I, I have provided for you uh, a draft of an MOU, and I want to re be really clear this is a living, breathing document. Well, when I first got here, everybody was talking about a merger, and mergers are, are, are not easy. They come hard, um, and oftentimes it leaves out elements that were once there. Um, and speaking with um, Kathy Bisbee and, and just taking a look at a careful analysis of this, it didn't, in the amount of time we have available, I don't see a merger happening that quick. Um, I've had some experience in regionalization when I was uh, director at um, Santa Cruz Department of Child Support Services. We did a memorandum of understanding with San Benito County mm -hmm. and it, it's still functioning, doing extremely well. So I took that MOU, dusted it off, and, le and it c actually in the first several documents um, that Keith got to look at, it said child uh, support, so <laughs> I didn't do that great of a job. But I really thought it was important to take a look at what the other options were. And uh, an MOU with a lead agency makes sense to me. Um, and I think it's something that's doable. Um, Kathy and I both started talking about February is a month for us to really start to ratchet this down. This board should be making a decision very early on in May um, in relationship to our budget to really put this into effect for our bu next budget year. It speaks to the DIFCA issue because it'll have scales of economy, um, but it also, it'll be much better defined by then. I think an MOU makes sense. It, three years from now, you may look at it and go, you know, it's time to merge, but it'll be time to merge. It'll feel more like a merger because it'll either have worked or it won't have worked. But my, my you know, collaboration is so vitally important. I think in, in this day and age, um, um, mergers and memorandums of understanding are happening pretty frequently. There's scales of economy. Uh, people want to... Um, have a greater exposure, and you get that through regionalization. It'll also be, uh, at least my impression is, it'll be one of the first in the state, if not the country, to talk about regionalization. And, and keep in mind that Monterey has been considered in this. I, I don't know where the CMAP is with them. Um, so the document you see, I, I don't want you to look at it and go, wow, there's things missing. Yes, there's things missing. And it'll be a continual working document. Um, we would mm -hmm. want to implement the ad hoc committee that Keith was chairing prior to um, my getting here um, to keep an eye on this, to keep watching it, to make sure, it is, as I'm working with it, I see it for what it is it is for me, but I may miss some piece that you all would want or, or CMAP may want. I have met with Kathy Bisbee a number of times. Um, we've had a number of conversations. Um, I did meet with her board, um, feeling a little reluctant to do it in that we hadn't even met with our own board about this, but, but also in the spirit of, of, we said we'd work in good faith, and that was a direction from this board that the director work in good faith with CMAP, and I felt that it was time to go visit their board. We had not had that opportunity. So I did take this document to them. Um, it was for the same discussion purposes and not for distribu distribution. Um, but but um, I, I think it gives us an opportunity to look at uh, two things that this accomplishes, I think, is one, that, that you get to where you want to go with the Board of Supervisors in terms of regionalization, um, not a merger. 
And secondly, I, I do think it has scales of economy. I think it really, it can work. Uh, it takes work to be collaborative. You know, it's a word that people use a lot, but it takes work to be collaborative. I intend to try to make sure that before I leave here, if this is the direction the board wants to continue going, that we've established it as a collaboration. I think staff worry about it. I think our members will worry about it. I think there are ways to, to decrease those worries, but it is, it is work. Um, but if this is work, can you imagine a merger? So I, I give to you the, um, um, the MOU is, I think, a good working document, and I would ask that the board consider um, changing the way we're looking at this from a merger to a um, memorandum of understanding between CMAP and CTV as a partnership. Mm. And again, there's a lot of detail. I mean, people ask the question, well, is it going to be CMAP or is it going to be CTV? Um, it can be CMAP slash CTV for the purposes of regionalization, but you'll still have your own identity here, and they would have CMAP um, where, where they are. But when you do grants and stuff, you'll want to do those as a partnership. It's three, three um, kinds of stationary. One says CTV, one says CMAP, and one says CMAP CTV. That's how that works. It's not, it, it, it's not that simple, but that's how, in, in reality, that's how it'll yeah. work. It also gives this board um, the continuing responsibility for CTV, and I think that's vitally important to have that, that feel in the community and that available uh, conduit. Um, and so it, it doesn't make a huge board now. It still keeps two individual boards. And there'll be times that I would ask, and particularly as we get closer to this, that our board um, spends some time with their board because it's important for the two boards to have a sense of each other and have a trust uh, and build a relationship. So I'll, I'll, I'll be glad to answer any questions you have. If you want me to get detailed about this, I'm, I'm going to tell you I'm not there yet. I intend to be before this is done. Yes, John. Unless you want to go first, Karen, because you know I thought uh, I thought what was important about the merger it started a discussion mm -hmm. and it started a way to look at things because we know things are going to change. And as I thought about this after you introduced the idea, I didn't even think about all the technicalities of the merger, but I thought about the timing. They've already gone through the difficult process. We haven't. So we would be merging and going through a financial process at the same time. And I think it probably is a good idea to take it one step at a time. This allows us to go through what we need to go through. So at some point in the future, if there is a merger, you have two equal groups in terms of financial issues, because ours are going to be totally different from theirs uh, in the next year or two, because they've gone through this whole process quite a while. But um, I think you know I think it's good we, we move forward and, and look at this concept. It's sure legally a lot easier to do and cheaper, and um, I think it lets people get to know each other too. And it, and it looks to me, just from looking at this draft, that we would keep two separate accounting systems. They have their financials, and we have our financials. It looks like we're not merging our money in any way. Is that what you see as being one of the key? You know, at some point, um, when you're talking about regional projects, you would be talking about shared, but you'd be very clear about what those were if it was, um, let's say we're looking for a grant, and we know it costs us to buy a grant, or CMAP and, and CTV would share that cost. In the past, we wouldn't be sharing that cost. We would be doing that unless we were doing a collaborative grant. So, so the answer is yes and no, okay. uh, but they'd be very specific kinds of things. Um, you know, we still haven't ratcheted down um, sharing of equipment and assets, but I can tell you the county, if you looked at the audit report, the county really owns the equipment we have here. That's an agreement we made with them that, that we get to keep it, but they get to own it. And um, um, so there are some things we have to be very clear about, sure. about those kinds of things. Those are the kind of detail things that I said will have to come in this memorandum of understanding. Mm -hmm. but, I, but, but having said that, I would think that we would want to share assets. We would want to find ways to get same, same equipment. And we might at some point have some equipment that we can use both Maybe we could use a CTV, but it would meet the needs of CMAP. Or CMAP would buy a piece of equipment that we could use as CTV. I mean, that's how collaborations work. Right. Uh, at some point, it gets blurred with money, but I, for the purpose of an MOU, you have to be much clearer about it. Right. When you merge, then that, that, that's when it gets uh, more gelled. 
Right. So I guess just to clarify for anybody who might be watching our meeting or anybody who's here, what do you see as being the key difference between a memorandum of understanding and a merger with CMAP? What do you see as being just the biggest difference between well, those two? Well, I, I think Joe actually put it in the right perspective. For us to get a merger pulled together in a timely manner, the, the Board of Supervisors is looking for us to come back to them in October 23, letting them know that we're actually going to do something between now and the next fiscal year. Um, I don't see us coming to the board on October 23rd and saying by May or June of this year that we would have a merger. It, it, and, and for the very reasons Joe points out, we're in two different fiscal, I mean, two things that are colliding for us. One is we have to get the county to agree to give us the contract mm -hmm. on October 23rd because that's what they're looking at, or they go to an RFP. Right. And the second one is that we've got this whole DIFCA thing coming. I think the MOU gives us a, you know, a way to get move into that, but not so rapidly that we don't take a look at all the gaps that may arise at some later date. I really believe in gap, gap analysis, and I haven't done it all, even in this. I can't imagine a merger being able to get it done in uh, May. Now, there are people out there that could actually do it, but I, but I think the dust on that trail would not settle very quickly. Okay, so it sounds like it's just much more complicated to do a merger versus... That, that's my experience. Okay. And, and so I, I think Joe's really right that this was just a way to find that we could start that relationship in a way that made sense and build on it as we go along. Okay. I think it doesn't discount a merger at some later date, but I think it would feel better at some later date and make more sense at some later date. Okay. No, I, I think that's a very sensible way to approach it and very, given the time frames that we have to work within, I think that makes a lot of sense. Thank you. Thank you. I, I think it sounds like a great, a great way to just test the waters, see what our strengths are, see what their strengths are. See how we're going to work out the van, the truck, you know, and how that's going to work out. And I, I just think it's a great idea. I mean, the the other way sounded fairly Very with a time crunch, just sounded daunting, and also just stepping into an unknown. Even though we knew a lot of the players, it just this feels like a great way to to get a sense, a better sense. Dip your toe in the pool. <laughs> well, I've really appreciated CMAP, and particularly Kathy. She's been very helpful in working with this and responsive to it. Um, she shares the same concerns I have about getting detail built in this, but um, and, and, and the CMAP board were interested in taking a look at this. So. Okay. But they had, you know, the, the, everybody's going to have some resistance to it. So, you know, you want to know what the rest of it is, and, and I think that'll be much clearer as we get along. Mm -hmm. Did, did she or did you have any, is there any kind of vision about joint regional projects that are even, we can even imagine at this point it, that are being put Well, forward? I think there are. Um, you know, there, there, there's opportunities for grants. Um, mm -hmm. There's a lot of things changing for, you know, I've said this before, I think, when we talked about DIFCA on, on the, the show, but, um, you know, the medical community, there's going to be money come pouring in around it. Prevention, intervention, I think that's a perfect segue for regional because diabetes is the same here as it is in San Benito County and Santa Clara County. Mm -hmm. um, childhood obesity is an issue. We could do regional grants fairly quickly, and, and those make sense to me. And, and if we're looking in terms of how we sustain ourselves over the next years, I think working with, with um, those kinds of grants are going to be very important. And, and getting on the front end of it, not on the tail end of it. Mm -hmm. um, so that's one. Um, uh, there are others that, that um, Kathy and I have talked about, uh, but this gives a great segue to do those kind of regional projects. Mm -hmm. Great. Okay. Uh, when everybody else is, I wanted to talk a little bit about the process. You talked about the ad hoc committee and, and just yeah. chat about that <coughs> for a second, too. Does anybody else have anything on that? Um, we don't have a motion, but uh, I'm happy to have members of the public discuss it. Um, first of all, I want to thank Lynn, because I think this is a good direction, um, and he's, he's all over it. I think we're in good hands with <laughs> yeah. shepherding this agreement along. The way I've characterized it is we're going to move in together with CMAP before we get married. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to check each other out. And see, you know. <laughs> See how it works together. out, and, and maybe we will end up merging, but this is a, a good way to do a collaboration. We have already talked about sharing uh, generic election <coughs> programming that uh, 
you know, there are definitely advantages to having this, this regional partnership. Now having said that, there's one thing that kind of, and I know I'm reacting knee-jerk, I'm being protective of CTV, uh, not being the lead agency. When I read the thing about, you know, the board of directors here has no hiring or firing uh, power over the executive director of the agency. Input, yes. But that's something that I think mm -hmm. the board needs to look at and see if there's some mechanism where there can be a little bit more guarantee of input or something like that. Um, not that it can't work. When we look back at the history here, I, I think some of you know that the reason we're in this building is there were two agencies involved in the creation of uh, community television in the city of Santa Cruz and the county of Santa Cruz. Basically, the city said, you can be the lead agency, talking to the county, as long as CTV is located downtown in one of the empty holes of the earthquake. So, and that's been fine. I think the city and the county get along great, and there hasn't been any of these issues of, oh, you know, you didn't listen to us, or I think they work closely together. So, uh, maybe not a big issue, but that definitely was a little red flag that, that went off to, to give up um, power over the executive director. So, mm -hmm. that's one thing to look at. Thank you. I think it was the regional director. Regional, right? yeah. Not, not the. I think each entity would still maintain their own ETs. No. 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 Oh, okay. I read that incorrectly. Oh, okay. 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 Let me respond to that. I think it's a good question. A very good question, um, and it does it does make people a little nervous. Um, the MOU we did with San Benito County. Um, that was this was the language we used in that, and Susan Moriello was my boss. And she wasn't willing to give up that to anybody. She wanted to work on the MOU. So um, I, my responsibility was to report to two boards and do two budgets and respond to the boards in very different ways. I mean, San Benito may have a totally different issue around child support than Santa Cruz County. It never was a question in my mind that if the CAO in San Benito was annoyed with something I did or the chair was annoyed that they would not be contacting our chair of our board or the CAO of our county. Um, I understood that going into it. I, I want to tell you again that still that model is still working. It's saving the state a considerable amount of money. Mm -hmm. um, but it does take work. You, you have to have a director that really pays attention to both boards, hears what each board's saying. Um, I think Kathy understands that. She would be the person at this point. Um, I, 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 but, but I left, and it still continued. And that person left. I came back for a short period of time. Another person came, and it's still working. Um, it can work. Um, but it's as equally hard for the executive director coming in as a regional director as it is for the boards to get used to it. Once, once you get into that pattern, it becomes, it, it, it would feel like to you, like I'm here today having a discussion with you about CTV. That's how it should feel when CMAP takes a leadership and their person comes in and talks to you about CTV. That's how I see it. Mm -hmm. So there wouldn't be an ED anymore of either entity, just one regional director for both. That's correct. Okay, so and that's, that's the economies the of scale savings. because okay. otherwise you're paying two directors and mm -hmm. right. the idea was to try to do regionalization but at the same time make sure that you're, that both CMAP and CTV are made whole and you start lowering those costs. Okay. You know, th there are all sorts of issues that are going to come up like this. This is an important one. There will be other ones. And I think that's why the ad hoc committee needs to be in you, yeah. be in an environment there where you can talk through these issues. Mm -hmm. yeah. <clears throat> but there is going to be change. There's going to be mergers and, and that. And mm -hmm. uh, uh, considering this is a step back from where we were headed, I'm not too, you know, concerned about that. Yeah. I'm more concerned about the process of how we get from one place to another. And I just wanted to remind everybody, the ad hoc committee, is ad hoc for everybody. So if anybody wants to come, they can participate. And we had pretty good participation mm -hmm. during that interim period until yeah. I took off on our vacation. Somebody else took off some other place. But I think that's the place we can kind of go over these, let Lynn talk about what his conversations are, mm -hmm. and kind of hone down. That's the, kind of the wrong word. It's kind of a buzzword you hear. But I just think we kind of have to take this uh, as a process we're going through. And uh, I'm not too worried about that at this point, because generally if people don't get along, 
it falls apart anyhow. So right. I, I, I think there's kind of a built-in governor there that you may not think about right now. Is there any other discussion here? Now, do we need, we, the board voted back in June to pursue this in good faith. Do we need to make any vote on anything here at this point? I don't think so. We're working with CMAP in good faith as you directed. I, I do want to say that we are going to the Board of Supervisors on October 23rd. Right. It's my intention to talk to the board about th the change in the way in which we look at this regionalization versus the um, merger, but I think it's just a matter of discussion. I, um, again, this is our working document, but I, I feel the need to make sure that the Board of Supervisors understands that we're going this direction and we're operating in good faith with mm -hmm. CMAP, um, and I suspect that Kathy should be there so that they, the board sees her there. Um, I'd also recommend that that as we go to the October 23rd meeting that this board and should be there. Uh, Keith will certainly be there. I, I will present, but it's always helpful to have a board there to show support and yeah. engagement, um, particularly in view of the fact that I'm going to be recommending that the Board of Supervisors continue our contract. Correct. And then I'm going to run. No, no. no. <laughs> As I've said before, I, I don't think they want to do an RFP, and, and I know yeah. we don't want to go to an R, the county to go to an RFP, and right. um, we will be meeting with the board to discuss that. Okay. okay. Any questions? Um, no. I just want to add, um, at the beginning of this conversation, and I support what Joe had just mentioned about the merger versus uh, um, the MOU here. Um, and the regionalization of the, the project, I too felt that it was going to be a little over, you know, daunting for us to get through that in a short amount of time. And I just feel really, since you've come on um, staff here, that um, this is a great, a great direction. And I'm really, really happy with what I'm seeing here, and I'm excited. And I think that the supervisor meeting is going to be positive because of that. So I just want to say thanks for that work. Thank you. Yeah. I think it's a, a good place to start. A really good place to start. Thank you. And let us know when the meeting is. I put it on my calendar, but I think it's like around 10 or 11 or something like that. If you can. Well, it's a board of supervisors. They start at 9.15. <laughs> yeah, I know. And, and, well, you know, I'll look then, it up, then, you know, the, um, on where you're I suspect I'll, I'll send out, I'll make sure you get a uh, note of when the, where we are on the agenda. Yeah, okay. And yeah. I can try and give you a fi fairly fixed time. Excellent. Thank you. All right. I don't expect it to be on the consent agenda. <laughs> no. <laughs> <clears throat> okay, so we'd like to move on to number nine then, committee uh, reports. Yeah, just very brief. Um, Lynn, do you want to discuss, we had a finance committee meeting because there was an issue over purchasing of equipment that was beyond the authority of the executive director in terms of the financing for it. So the executive finance committee had a meeting. <coughs> there are minutes here, so our auditor will be happy if he happens to be watching us this evening. And an approval was given, but you want to just give uh, another 30 seconds on that? Well, um, you know, we, we did have some money for fixed assets, and we purchased HD cameras. And if you ask me to tell you the technical stuff of that, I wouldn't be able to do it, and, and maybe somebody else could. But, but it's really a, an important asset for us because our, our equipment is aging. Um, and um, so this was imperative for us to do this now. We're, we're having people come and get equipment that we know is is not functioning correctly. This will help us to, to add to our, if you will, our fleet of cameras available, but a step up from what we had before. Um, um, Craig did a really good job of, of working with these people, getting this as low as we could get it, um, and even went back later and got them to put some more into the warranty. Um, so I think we did a really good job of having it ready for the board. It was beyond the amount that the director is authorized to, to do, and so I mm -hmm. asked for the finance committee meeting so that we would have a record of this asset purchase and that there was a vote to do that. Now, I, I'll answer any questions as long as they're not technical. If they're technical, I'll call on Ron or Craig to answer them for you. But um, okay. That's all I have to say. Okay. So we have some new equipment. We got some new equipment. It's here. Great. It's here, and yeah. Craig's been working on it nice. since it got here. Very good. Yeah. Everyone's excited. All right, then we move on to 10, the oral report from board chair and other board members. Uh, I would like to take this time to thank the staff for the wonderful volunteer appreciation 
barbecue that we had this last weekend. Absolutely. It was really, really nice. And it's great to have all the volunteers out and see them appreciated. And uh, it was, a lot of board members were there. That was great. Um, anyone else want to say anything about that or anything else that's uh, <coughs> oral communication? Yeah. I wanted to um, say it's probably pretty obvious by now that I've stepped down as board chair. And um, I am remaining on the board. But Keith has kindly stepped in, and I appreciate it. I have stepped down for personal reasons, which a few of you are aware of. I have kind of been pulled in a different direction. But I did just want to thank Lynn and Keith for their really hard work that they've been doing. It's uh, spearheading all the changes that have been going on. I, you guys are just doing a fabulous job, and I'm, I'm so proud of really not just you two, but what everybody's been doing here. And um, I think we're really heading in a positive direction. And I just wanted to say thank you for, for filling my shoes. You, you're doing a great job. And. Um, well, I, I think I speak for the board when I say thank you for all the time you spent as chair. Absolutely. Thank all the you. work you've done. Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. And I want to just say thank you to Kathy, too. She kept us fed with the meat coming off the barbecue this last <laughs> week. Uh, great work on that. And also, I want to say thanks to everyone who showed up at the county fair uh, a few weeks ago. I thought we had a good presence there. The, our vehicle looked great, and everyone that sh uh, stopped by was impressed with the equipment uh, for what it was. And I just want to say thanks for everyone who showed up that uh, period of time. Okay. We already did the report of the executive director, and that takes us to any requests for special items to appear on the next regular meeting agenda in November. Well, that's, that's our election meeting, right? That is election of officers. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Okay. Ron. Um, I, I have a question that I'm not sure the changes in bylaws exactly addresses. Uh, what is the status of members elected by the public uh, who are currently on the board? Do they, <coughs> ser I would imagine yeah. they serve out their term and yes. then there's an appointment, but do you need to codify that or? <coughs> I, I think that's one of the things we can send to the attorney to, yeah. to make okay. sure we do that correctly. So that'll be coming back at the next meeting. I would hope so. Mm -hmm. And that's good that you bring that up because that's not specifically in there to ask him. Correct. But we're, we're, yeah. We'll ask the question. Thank right. you, Ron. Yeah. yeah, it was it was my understanding that they would serve out the remainder of the term. So I'm sorry, uh, Keith. Um, you had mentioned the date of our next meeting, and uh, that's going to be our election November. meeting, or that's a officer election, okay. mm -hmm. November fifteenth. November fifteenth. Right. And that's what it says here. Two right. seats expiring. Right. Two seats expiring. At that meeting, so. Yes. Well, mine is. Yeah. Oh, and yours Including as well. Me. No, three Cap then. The two oh. public two public seats are expiring, right. and then. Capital. Yeah. Yes. I've done my eight years. Crazy. <laughs> well, thank you. Right. <laughs> so, do do we need to at the next meeting um, have some idea what who we're going to be bringing on board in November? Yes. Or? yes. So it's up to us as a board to find those members. Okay. Now, we, will we be meeting uh, to deal with that prior to our next meeting? Well, there's an outstanding question of whether the board needs to meet before the October 23rd presentation. You know, in some bylaws, and, and I, guess, I don't know why I didn't think of this earlier, um, oftentimes you, you have a bylaw that talks about your um, nominating committee. Um, and you probably should have a nominating committee who meets prior to the board meeting, mm -hmm. reviews the appointment applications, and then brings forward to the board their recommendation. And it's only a recommendation right. for appointees. And that, you know, I'll have to take a look at these bylaws again. Uh, again, we can amend them. Yeah. But it probably you should probably have a. Um, that kind of committee because it makes it makes sense because that committee then would meet prior to your board. The bylaws currently state that the governance committee has that job. Okay, okay. so then I then I'd stand okay. corrected. I okay. believe they also state that you're supposed to have the nomination a month ahead of the November right. meeting. That's what I'm saying. We're getting close on time on that. Yeah. yeah. Oh, the 15th. You're right. Yeah. October. Okay. So we'll have to call a governance committee. There's a couple of committees okay. that need to be called for a number of reasons. Okay. So and that would you mean you'll be this hearing is, from me. This, okay. this new policy then would then go into effect then, where we would we would make sure that there's a notice that goes out to the membership that there are new positions available. Yep. 
I believe we voted to, of that policy tonight. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the policy is so immediately the policy. in effect. So the bylaws okay. aren't. Right. Yeah. Right. That was another thing I thought about, but didn't want to right. take a long No, it's a good point, yeah. Right. Well, I'd like to request that we have an evening meeting so I could be available to be there. For the governance Yes. Meeting? Okay. That would be great if we could do an evening or weekend. What, when you reach 6 o'clock? Uh, 5.30. I 530? can be as early as Yeah, okay, good. Yeah. Okay. And do we, uh, where I left that was, do we need to... Outside of this meeting, we can call a special board meeting, but I just wanted to get here from Lynn. Yeah, I, I'm not sure you need to call a special board meeting. We've had the first reading. I think time to give the attorney to look at the bylaws, right. um, and then you'll have your governance committee to talk about the nominations. We will get, do we have a vacancy? We have two vacancies that are will be available for appointment, correct? Mm -hmm. Is that what you said? Yeah. So we would get out the membership that we were seeking appointments, and we get out it to the public in general. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's how Capitola does it. That's how Watsonville does it. Um, right. They get out to the general. Public, so we'll we'll get that out in some fashion, um, probably in the paper under um, appointments available. Mm -hmm. I, I saw that in coastlines. The Capitola one was mentioned this last week. That's correct. Yeah. They, can they can we us. start that process immediately? Can we ask Ali or or Kathy or somebody to? You know, Kathy and I can work on it. Yeah. We'll start so well. posting something now. We'll, we'll get. We'll make sure something's out by Monday. Okay. Um, or, or, yeah, Wednesday, Thursday. <laughs> well, not Monday at 7 a.m., but Monday shortly after 7 a.m. Okay, yeah, because if we could, I think the sooner we start on that, the better. I, I, do, I guess I do want to remind the board that I will be away from the office mm -hmm. from um, the 3rd through the 14th. I'm going to be in Washington, D.C. I will be available to staff both on uh, online and uh, on my cell phone. Um, Kathy will be covering in my absence. Um, Great. So I just want to make sure everybody knows that. <coughs> Which Kathy are we talking about? D'Angelo. New Kathy. Okay. <laughs> Thanks for the clarification. Yeah. Kathy D'Angelo. Okay. okay. All right. Is there any other issues we have to discuss? Okay. Well, before we adjourn, um, I'm afraid I'm missing one person, but I would like to thank the volunteers that helped out tonight. Yeah. I know that John Maurer and David Jay Karen Scott, George Haas, and Suzanne Dyer have all helped out. I think I might have missed one person. I'm sorry if I did, but thank you all very I think much. Your for wife was. Yeah. Oh, you did. Okay. Yeah. 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 All right. yeah. Thank you. <laughs> well, I uh, make a motion to adjourn. Second. <laughs> okay. I don't think we need any discussion. <laughs> <laughs> I'm all in favor. Aye. 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 Thank you. Great. Thank you all. Nice to meet you. Thank you. We'll go